This game is going to challenge everything you know and every habit you have as a gamer. You may think to yourself, zombies, uh, no big deal. I'll just be Connor the Suburbarian, put all my points into strength and fitness and be like real buff and dangerous. Even if I can find an ax or a sword, I'm just gonna grab whatever and just rush out there and just clobber them and it'll be good. If you think that's gonna work, the game is going to disabuse you of that notion and the emphasis here being on abuse. Chances are you'll end up with the toothiest BJ you can possibly imagine. They will literally eat your dick. If you like realistic games, there are plenty of options nowadays. You have a number of simulators, of course. You have racing simulators, farming simulators, all kinds of things, really. Uh, you've got, when it comes to combat, you have Arma, of course, for modern military combat. You have Kingdom Come Deliverance and Hellish Court for historical combat. This and that and the other. And uh, some of them are just about as realistic as you can get or as you would want to get. This, however, I don't think you can beat in terms of not only realism, but also immersion. Uh, of course, those two overlap quite a bit. You know, what's realistic is typically immersive as well. But there are games which have a high level of realism without being quite as detailed in the immersive experience, shall we say. Hi. How's it going? So, um, in this game, a lot of things you can normally get away with, it's not an option here, and a lot of things that you normally can't do in other games, you absolutely can here. Oh, nice. Military boots. I'll put those on because they give me some extra scratch and bite defense. So, armor. Um, things like... For example, you can't just rush out and just slay zombies left, right, and center and feel good about yourself. I mean, there are a num oh, gun case. There are a number of ways to customize the settings. You can make the zombies a lot easier. Um, you can make them, uh, for example, less tough, uh, stronger, less strong. You can make them more or less perceptive. Uh, things of that nature. You can freely customize how much loot there is, etc., etc. So you can make it easy. Easy, I should, at the very least. But it's also going to be pretty challenging because if you just run around banging everything and everyone, not in a good way, uh, that's, you're gonna run out of gas pretty quickly, you know, just like you would expect in real life. You can't just be swinging nonstop because well, even if you're particularly fit, you're going to gas out eventually. You're going to get tired. You can't do it all day. The zombies can. Uh, also, it's nice that you can equip just about everything and it actually shows up right here. So the silver bangle on his right wrist, watch on the left wrist, you can see everything. That's one of the things that they changed in this update. Current build is 41. So it's even more immersive than it was before which is saying a lot because it was already highly realistic and immersive to begin with. But now it's like, it's crazy. Like every, every, everything shows, every little thing. Before you couldn't see the bags or cases that you're carrying around, now you can. Now you see just about everything. You will see blood accumulate on your weapon and on your clothing. You can also wash it off. You can, now you can exercise. Like, for example, do push-ups which will increase your strength over time, if you do it enough. And there's already a zombie banging. You can't even work out here. So they will eventually break through. They will cause all kinds of trouble. I mean, they should, it's zombies, right? <laughs> They're not gonna be fun. So in the beginning, depending on what settings you've got and where you spawn, oh, that was, that was actually a close one. Sometimes uh, they will definitely try to reach out. So this is a situation I don't want to be in, for example. That's a bit too many with just, you know, a, an improvised weapon. 
So I don't really want to mess with that. So I'm just going to book it. Uh, by the way, you can't just keep running forever. They will catch up. You will get tired, etc., etc. Um, they should, they should be able to lose them. But there's so many things you have to be aware of. Um, not just the danger of the zombies, which is significant. Um, as an example, one time I was doing pretty well. I had a nice base. I had a good number of supplies. I have weapons. I had, you know, progressed pretty decently with the skills. And so I was going out for a supply run. And the mistake I made was at the time I didn't have my headphones on because I was waiting for the kitchen timer. And I opened the I opened the door, zombie bites me dead. Um, <laughs> it's just that's how it can go sometimes. And a bite is all it takes because bites have a 100% chance to infect you. Once you're infected, there's absolutely nothing you can do. You will turn and um, the game will mock you. So if you want to create a new character, it'll overlay the skills or, you know, the character creation screen. And in the background, meanwhile, your character will zombify and start roaming around looking for tasty brains. So, uh, yeah, the game is just, it's like, yeah, you fucked up. Deal with it. You'll, you'll be a zombie now. Everything you see can be used. Um, the more they update, the more options you have. Like, for example, I can take his shirt, rip clothing, so I can get bandages here, rip sheets. Um, this in particular, this apparently wasn't bloody. If the bandage was bloody, you should not put it on your wound because it'll definitely get infected. And once you get an infected wound, you better have antibiotics or, I mean, sometimes you can heal from it, but they're just so many things to keep in mind. You can create stir fry with you know, a frying pan, you can use a kettle to boil water and make tea. You can pick up a pot, boil water in it, disinfect bandages in there. There's a million things to do here. And also, let me just finish this one off here real quick. And the thing just broke. You can still stomp them in the head. Um, yeah. So weapon durability, that's another thing. Um, there are all kinds of things you can use as improvised weapon, and some of them are reasonably effective, or ish, at least. Um, but the improvised ones will generally uh, not have great condition. And things like bags. So this case here has a capacity of six and weight reduction of five. The tote bag is doing a lot better. So I should grab this and then I actually have to equip the other, the, the, gun, the gun case in the other hand. So now I'm able to put things from one container into the other. So inventory management is a little bit cumbersome, but in a completely fair, realistic way. I mean, the game can be unfair, but only the same way that real life can be unfair. Sometimes things shit just happens and you just get in trouble. Not always your own fault, most of the time it is. <laughs> because it's just sometimes you get complacent. You know, once you've you've holed up in a nice space, you think like, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm doing fine. And then like I mentioned, you open the door and a zombie chomps down on you and that's it. Everything is a context menu right here. You can Open the window, smash the window. But if you smash the window with your bare hands, there's a good chance you're gonna get cut. And if you, even if it's just a scratch, if you don't bandage it, it may very well get infected and you can be in a world of trouble. In most games, this would not be a big deal situation right here. One, two, three, four, five zombies, eh, whatever. You slaughter them quickly. Here, uh, if you don't have a good weapon, probably not because they can grab you, they can hold on to you, they can even drag you down to the ground. And if there are multiple zombies reaching for you, you can't get away, they will hold you. So you need to think about all kinds of things, particularly also noise. 
So if I were to grab this pistol right here, 44 Magnum, and start blasting suckers, like those right there, basically the entire neighborhood would be after me because stuff's loud. <laughs> so zombies can hear that and they will act accordingly and you will be basically ringing the dinner bell. This, by the way, see how he's kind of squeezing by the trees? That will scratch up your clothing at a faster rate. Sometimes you can get actual scratches and, um, you know, it all accumulates, basically. Then you've got all of this to deal with. You, you get thirsty, you get hungry. Oh, and here, this is one thing I really like. You can actually see what zombies are wearing. So this, this zombie cop right there is a shotgun. I would like to get that. I mean, not so much a shotgun because it's too loud, but I would like to see what else he has. He probably is wearing a bulletproof vest, which is pretty good armor here but I'm being chased by a horde right now. I, as much as I want to, I can't just make a run for it and just knock him down and take his stuff. Um, sometimes you run into zombified cops that are wearing a motorcycle helmet. Yeah, they're, they're a little bit tougher. They get the armor too. If you're dealing with shamblers, you can outwalk them. Like you don't have to be sprinting, but depending on how many there are, you may not find a safe spot. You know, there's one, there's one. There are zombies everywhere. So as you walk away, you will attract more and more of them. They see you, they come shuffling up. Even though they can't catch up to you, you just, you will drag this horde. Well, it's not a horde by any means. There are real hordes in the game. But uh, yeah, you'll just um, accumulate a fan base that is really after you. And zombies can also migrate between areas. So if you clear out an area, zombies can come in from another part of the map. So depending on your settings, you just may not be safe. Okay, I should have lost them in the woods. I think also you probably already noticed the character can't see everything. They are not omniscient. So only the direction which I'm facing, I can see. I have a certain radius, sight radius. You know, people have peripheral vision after all. So you really can't be more realistic than that. I mean, you could, but that would be difficult to implement. Like for example, in real life, you can take quick glances over your shoulder, right? Which the char character here can't, like you have to turn all the way, which is kind of slow actually. This is pretty fast turning all the way around, not so fast. You can also forage. You can, uh, in fact, make spears, for example. You can make a wooden spear, which is just a sharpened stick, which is quite effective, but it breaks easily. In fact, spears are the best weapons in the game, as far as I know. There's one sword. Of course, it's a katana. Even that is pretty plausible, like your chances uh, if you're scavenging random houses, your chance of finding a katana is probably higher than finding, say, a longsword or a basket hilt sword or what have you. Yeah, th this is... I don't like this. It's a bit too many. Unfortunately, I don't have a bottle on me. I wish I had grabbed one. I was too busy explaining things about the game. <laughs> uh, you can grab water from the river and boil it. Oh yeah, a uh, soaked t-shirt. That's sweat. The game simulates that too. You know what else the game simulates? Nutrition. Calories. Not just calories, but fat and protein. And if you, if you keep eating a bunch of junk food, that affects the character's health negatively. Um, there's, there's so much. Oh, that was sudden. You got something I want. You have a sidearm too with a holster. And I don't think there's any other zombies around right now. Let me make sure. No, there's one coming there, but it's okay. Also, you gotta aim for the head. There. Okay, this one. And then there's another one coming over here, I think. All right, stomp the shit out of you. Okay. Now, I can loot you. 
Nice. I'm definitely going to wear that holster. Again, I don't really want to be using this this gun right now. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna grab the shotgun anyway, just because it's a shotgun. No ammo, but hey, I can't resist. I just legit can't. Okay. Also, ammo is usually in a box. It's kind of how it how it happens in real life. Ammo is, is packed. You know, you gotta. Open the box. Okay, is the zombie coming? Oh, watch this by the way. Do you see the, the glasses? His glasses fell off when I shoved them. This game simulates just about everything. Okay, so we got a magazine. There are no cartridges in the magazine, so you actually have to load that. Put the magazine in it. Now, there we go. Now it's ready to go. Again, I don't <laughs> want to be shooting the 44 here because that would attract a lot of them. Plus, uh oh, this is not good. Plus, in the beginning, the character is not really going to be very good at shooting, which is very, very realistic. If you give most people who haven't trained a firearm, they won't be able to hit anything just about at very close range they, they will be able to hit things but without proper uh, trigger control and knowing how to use the sights uh, line them up properly focus on the front side blah 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 this and that and the other they're terrible even more so when panicked and the characters will get panicked when a bunch of zombies chase them so then they get even less accurate you know normally in games ammo just comes in always in magazines all the ammo you pick up just goes right in the gun no problem here no you have to you have to actually do it properly the magazines will not auto load themselves another example of the the crazy amounts of realism if you turn the stove on and put some food on let's say we're creating a roast you can add soy sauce as spice which gives you a mood bonus the character likes it better because the character can get depressed over time so right now the stove is on and uh, it'll start cooking you can burn it though and if you leave this on with food in there's a risk of burning the house down literally uh, let alone if you put things like if you put a gas can in the, the oven it'll definitely start burning pretty soon so you can use it to your advantage what you can also use is you know call zombies over or otherwise make sound like you can for example grab an alarm clock and set it and uh, when when the alarm goes off zombies will be attracted to that you can even see if the zombie has a weapon stuck in them. Sometimes you can see they have like a knife or some other weapon stuck in their body and you can take it. I could be talking for several hours and would still only be scratching the surface. Oh, scratching. Um, <laughs> this is kind of unrelated, but you can grab the pencil and the eraser. And uh, do we have anything? Yeah, empty notebook. Uh, now it's burning. So I'm just going to grab that. I'm just happy that the game doesn't cause you to burn yourself if you grab a hot pan of the stove and put it in your inventory. I wouldn't even put it past it. Please don't do that, developers. <laughs> don't. Just, just don't. Okay. Uh, you can decide how much of it you want to eat. I'm actually going to wait a little bit because this do... Huh. Foot pain. Did he stub his toe? So I didn't even notice that. See, this is the kind of stuff that, yeah, sometimes sometimes you can injure yourself. Also, when running, uh, when running, you can trip, you can fall, you can injure yourself. So I can take a note here. And, uh, and this, this will be <laughs> useful. I mean, not this in particular, but uh, yeah, I can... I can have this in the notebook. The reason why I picked up the eraser is you can get maps here where you can also make notes and, and you know place symbols. Oh, that's good. Satchel, you can equip that on the back. Um, if you want to actually erase whatever you're, you're drawing on, you need an eraser. I mean, if it's a pencil. 
if you find a red pin, then guess what? The notes you take on the map are going to be red. If you find a blue pen, it's going to be blue. It's just... <laughs> It just goes on and on and on. The game simulates even the most trivial things. I don't know of any other game which has this level of immersion. It's nuts. Like, there are highly complex games, like, um, for example, um, Dwarf Fortress. Super complex, right? But it doesn't have the same level of immersion because you don't see everything. And this is where the most recent update makes quite a difference. Now that you see bags on the character, you see over time the clothing gets torn, they get bloody, etc. etc. It is so much, so much attention to detail. It's just crazy, you know? Okay, stab you. Nope, not there. Stab her in the head. Head buddy, there you go. Vehicles. So it was one of the big updates that I used to wait for quite a while. Most of them are locked. This one happened to be unlocked. Uh, you can... Oh yeah, there we go. There's a map. You can sometimes find some pretty useful things there. I think I already have a... Yep. Torch. Torch. Some British nonsense where right there's not a burning stick. Okay. It's a pet peeve of mine. Uh, anyway, so here, what I can do is unlock the trunk, but I don't have a key, so I can't start this. Also, most cars by default have no gas in the tank. Most loot here is pretty logical. You know, like, yeah, you can find food in the car if, if the person did a grocery run shortly before they died, you know. Um, if you want to find guns, your best chance is, well, guess what, the gun shop or a police station, things like that. You won't find, I mean, sometimes you'll find a pistol or a shotgun in a house, which again, it makes sense, some people have that. Uh, you, you won't usually find it in a toilet, the way you can in seven days to die. There are a number of ways to secure yourself. For example, I can pick up this chair here. and put it right over here in front of the door as an extra defense boom that's something that you can't do in a lot of games in some games you can craft things like you can craft you know furniture building blocks whatever and just put them like you know minecraft style just put a block somewhere here um you can build things too but you can also just pick them up and put them somewhere um you can Remove the light bulb, disassemble the, the lamp. It's just everything. You can disassemble chairs. You can just, you can do almost everything and anything you can possibly think of. So I said, basically I could be talking for hours about the complexity of this game. It's just mind blowing. There's so much going on. The crafting system is, has so much going on, uh, how much you can build. You know, you have to prepare for things like electricity running out, water being shut off, you know, feeding yourself, this and that and the other. It's extremely involved and it just it has become more and more complex over time. As they update more things, it just it grows and grows like a zombie tumor. If that's the thing. Anyway, <laughs> thanks for listening. So if you're looking for something that gives you this kind of immersion, something where you can be creative, you know, a game that lets you do all kinds of things, you know, all kinds of different character builds, different strategies, etc., etc. and you haven't already tried out Project Zomboid, by all means, give it a try. It's, it's definitely one of my favorite games. It's, it can be highly addictive, even though it's also very punishing. <laughs> it will abuse you if you if you think you can mess around. I'll leave it at that. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks again and have a good one, folks.